So let's go ahead and, and dive right into uh, to, to safety. Now, we often think about prescription um, benefits as, well, a benefit, as an enhancement, and, and we need to continue to do that. The challenge with drug coverage at times is because we focused on cost, some of the barriers that have been put into place to manage cost have created some hassles for, for consumers. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the management, te management techniques from a safety lens and really focus on the, the issue of cost. My call to action to you is to really get involved, roll up your sleeves again. It's, this isn't set it and forget it, but we'll give you some questions to ask recommend that you listen to your employees to see how the benefits unfolding and really help you get get prescription value okay so let's talk about oxycontin so in in this slide what you see is the the amount of oxycontin that was uh, consumed in america and the u.s is the blue line versus europe over time now the timeline on this graph is on this graph is pretty small, so I'll walk you through it. What we see in the late 90s is a spike that starts to occur um, of how much oxycontin, oxycodone, uh, was dispensed in our country. Um, so um, the reasons for this were were a couple fold. One is these products were heavily promoted. The manufacturers of some of the branded products promoted these, these products very, very heavily to physicians. Um, there were well-intentioned clinicians who had a problem and this medication, uh, these types of medications were seen as a solution to the problem that they were, that they were dealing with. The problem really boils down to, from my perspective, that physicians prescribed a medication that did not have adequate evidence of benefit for the condition it was being treated. And this is really the crux of the situation that I'd like to, I'd like to focus on, and I'd like to get you to think about a little bit uh, as you're thinking about uh, prescription benefits. So the question is, what if a prescription benefit covers a drug that really lacks adequate evidence uh, that it's going to improve health, and what are the ramifications of that? So one impact of the prescription op opioid crisis that we have uh, and that we're currently experiencing is an increase in opioid overdoses currently. And we've certainly uh, seen this in the news. And what we see in this chart is a mortality graph. Um, uh, there is a, an increase in opioid-related deaths that have occurred starting about 10 years after the, um, after the uh, increase in prescriptions of these medications. So we see a lag after medications have been used inappropriately at great quantities, the fallout starts to occur. So Certainly there's a lot in the press around opioid overdoses. We're starting to see this bleed over into heroin uh, overdoses. So you'll see a spike in the orange line, which represents heroin overdoses as, as well. Um, significant dramatic impact of a medication uh, that has, was overused um, and it has gone wrong. In addition to deaths, uh, perhaps some under-recognized impacts of the opioid crisis, about half of the unemployed men in America are on opioids for, for some reason or another. So there are manufacturing facilities, there are employers we're dealing with who are dealing with record low unemployment and they're unable to hire workers uh, because those workers are, are dependent on or addicted to opioids. Opioid related deaths have now surpassed motor vehicle accidents as a cause of death in the United States. So uh, an extraordinarily dramatic impact. So how, how does this potentially relate to employer coverage? Well, I wanna share a story uh, that I was personally involved in back in the mid 2000s of an employer that recognized the potential uh, harm that could have come from these, from, from opioids. And the, the, there was a, um, a manufacturer uh, who was involved in the fitness uh, industry 
And one of those senior executives in that company experienced a, a tragic personal loss due to opioid medications. And they recognized that as a fitness, as a healthcare uh, related company, that they could do better, that they could take a stronger stance. And they worked closely with their uh, pharmacy benefit manager at the time I was involved in the, in the program. And we worked with them to really make sure that opioids were only covered for the sickest patients who could benefit from those therapies. And we were very vigilant about making sure that people didn't get prescribed excessive quantities of opioids. So the, the, the balance that we um, experienced and that we, we had to strike was on one hand, uh, there was concern about the safety of the use of these medications for the employer or for the employees. And so there were some restrictions that were put in place to ensure that the medications were used safely. On the other hand, there was a view of a hassle or some friction because of the way that those programs were put into place. There were restrictions on access. And the expectation among many employers that we were dealing with at the time was the drug is FDA approved, it's prescribed by a physician, it should be covered. So cover the drug. Why would you uh, implement restrictions or hassles or burdens on these medications? Um, but I would like to think in retrospect, after seeing how the opioid crisis has unfolded over the past couple of years, that we, we took steps to, um, to uh, relieve um, and to prevent some, some harm from these medications. So there's good news um, on th that has out of this opioid crisis. So first, there were changes in the laws around the use of opioid medications that have led to a significant decrease. In 2014, 2015, there was a change in the way that medication, uh, certain medications were dispensed by pharmacies, and that has led to a dramatic decrease in the overall amount of opioids that were dispensed. There's also just a lot more public awareness around the scope of this problem. Uh, the next uh, good news is that there are tools and resources available. The National Safety Council, um, as an example, has resources for employers that mirror a lot of the programs and activities that we used back 10, 15 years ago. Uh, to help people uh, raise awareness about the, the, the problem. So I believe that employers have a key opportunity here to help their employees by one, uh, in, in implementing benefit designs that can help uh, reduce unsafe medication use, but also by communicating with their employees, showing that they care, uh, raising awareness to this problem, which has ultimately become a public health issue. And then, so finally, my perspective, the lesson learned is that it's everyone's responsibility to ensure safe and effective medication use and that employers do in fact play a significant role. So what are the lessons learned? What can you do? The, the moral of the story uh, is that just because a medication is FDA approved does not mean it will be used safety, uh, safely. So ask if your prescription benefit covers only or uh, prefers the safest, most effective medications. I will say, and perhaps this is the topic for another webinar, that there is increasing focus on the quality or the effectiveness of medications that are coming to the market. Uh, we've seen, for example, an increase in the conversation around the, um, the, the potential lowering of the threshold that the FDA is uh, requiring for a medication to come to market. And so there's, there's increasing discussion around that. The reality is that the FDA is subject to political pressures. They're subject to some pressure to ensure that people have access to therapies. We've heard about, um, you might've heard about the right to try legislation where the FDA is allowing more unproven therapies to come to market. So the, the lesson really here is make sure that you're uh, prescription benefit is attuned to this and is looking at not just cost, but the safety and effectiveness of medications. Mm -hmm.